In Creo Parametric, you can export drawings to the DXF format. The DXF format comes from Autodesk and it literally stands for the Drawing Exchange Format. To get to the command, you go to the File menu and then go to Save As and Save a Copy. When I click on that, it opens up a dialog box and then in the Type drop-down list, you can choose DXF. Be aware there is a DWG option if you want to create an AutoCAD drawing. But let's go to the DXF option. I will click on it. Then you can change the file name. By default, it is going to use the same name of the drawing with an underscore and a number. Then we have a button over here for customize export. Be aware that this box doesn't do anything when you're going to export a drawing. It is more commonly used for when you're exporting a model and you want to export using a different reference coordinate system. Next, let's take a look at the options button. When I click on that, it opens up a dialog box. At the top, it says DXF export profile settings. I'll bring this up in a couple minutes when we go to set up an export profile, but you can choose whether you want to include facets, quilts, or construction bodies. And there are also some different options here for the tessellation settings. If you want to, you could save this as a profile or you could load a pre-existing profile. Let's hit the cancel button to get out of here. Now I will click on the OK button and when you do that, it opens up the export environment for DXF dialog box. And you have a drop down list. You can save to any DXF format from 2018 or earlier. And then we have four different tabs in here. You have the entities tab where you can choose whether you want splines to be output as splines or polylines. You have a bunch of options for the hatching and the points and for the notes, whether you want them to be exported as text or if you want to stroke all characters or the special characters and export the multi-line note as M text. There is also a text alignment drop-down list where you can change between as is or fit. Down at the bottom here, there's an option to generate a log file. I almost always turn this off because the log file usually doesn't get me anything. Let's go to the sheets tab. You can choose to export the current sheet as model space, the current sheet as paper space, all sheets as paper space, or if you choose selected sheets, you could choose which sheet is exported as model space. And then for the other available sheets, you could specify that you want those exported as paper space. Next up, the miscellaneous tab. From here, you could choose to export blanked layers. And if you have an assembly, you could export the assembly structure as layers or blocks. And the blocks can be nested or view-based. And I'll mention that again in a moment. You can create comments in the DXF file, and you can preserve breaks on the dimension lines, like if you have dimension lines crossing over one another. Next up, we have this drop-down list for the image format, and you can choose whether images are exported as JPEGs or PNG files. And I'll point out that in my drawing that I'm going to export, I have a little picture here that I use for my company logo. This is something that would end up getting exported as a PNG or JPEG, depending on what you choose. All right, let me go back to zoomed out a little bit. And then we have a properties tab. And so there are a bunch of different tabs on here. You have a colors tab and be aware by default when Creo Parametric exports the colors, they will map to the standard AutoCAD colors. Let's go to line fonts next. And here we have the Creo Parametric fonts and the DXF fonts. Those once again are going to map to the AutoCAD standards. Let's take a look at text fonts. And we have a bunch of different fonts in here corresponding to DXF fonts. And last thing to mention is that we have layers. And you have here our Creo parametric layers and the DXF layers. Right now they are the same and that's based on 
a config.pro setting, and I'll bring that up in a moment. Be aware that there is a config option for exporting your different layers, and what you have in here ends up being determined by the setting of that configuration option. And you could also change the names of the layers that are going to be exported here. But anyhow, if you are happy with all the different settings, you can click on the OK button and the DXF file has been created. Let's talk about a few of the other different options that you can set up. If you go to the file drop down menu and then options, options, this opens up the Creo Parametric Options dialog box. There is a data exchange category. When you go to it, you can choose to set up or open up your different import profiles and your export profiles. Well, we are just doing an export profile. Let me go to the select drop down list. Here are our different file types. I could choose DXF, and then you can choose to set up your export profiles. And this is the same dialog box that we saw earlier, where you can choose what you want to include and the tessellation settings and choose if you want to save this as a profile or load a pre-existing profile. Let me cancel out of here. If you've saved one of those different profiles, well, you can go, oops, let me cancel out of there. You can go to the DXF setting and select your profile and have that saved so that it will always use that profile when you're going to export the file. Let's talk a little bit more about some configuration options. So I will go to the configuration editor. You can use the find button. And for the keyword, let's use the keyword DXF to find DXF related options. And I'm going to check the option to search descriptions. Let's find it now. And I'm going to make this a little bit wider so you can see the options and the description. And so you want to look for any of the ones with out in the name for exporting DXF files. So for example, this is whether you want to export the comments. Here's one for the drawing scale. Just want to scroll down through some other different ones. There are these INTFD 2D and then out in the name. So here's the AutoCAD ellipses, AutoCAD hatches, and so on and so forth. The other lay, uh, option that I want to mention is this INTF out layer. The default value is none, and that's what causes you to export layers to AutoCAD that have the same layer names as in your Creo parametric model. Be aware that there are a bunch of different options down here. So for example, there's the block layer option, which allows you to get AutoCAD blocks if you want. Here's the part layer option, which is used if you have assemblies and you want to get layers for each individual component in the assembly. And then here's the other stuff about block nested layer, block view based layer, block nested view based layer. And that was from when we went to change the option for exporting assemblies as blocks. So be aware that if you're doing a lot of export, you want to probably do some more research into this INTF out layer option. All right, the very last thing that I want to mention in here, let me change the keyword. Let me change this to preferred export. Who knew that there was so much stuff to know about exporting a DXF file? Anyhow, there's this config.pro option called preferred export format. And like the description says, you can set the default preferred export file type for export from drawings. Well, if we go to this drop down list, you can see that the default value is PDF, but here we have the DWG option and the DXF option and a bunch of other different options. If you change this to DXF, that's going to end up changing the behavior. Let me just hit add change and close and okay. And it's going to prompt me, no, I'm not going to save this to my config.profile. Changing that option affects what you're going to get when you go to the file drop down menu and then choose save as and then quick export. You can see from the tooltip and the explanation, this will export the active object in PDF format without making any changes. But if you change that config.pro option preferred export format to DXF, 
Well, when you hit this button, it's going to end up exporting a DXF file. So there you have it, a lot of information about exporting to the DXF file format.